Advanced Financial Accounting OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in OneNote related to a consolidation. Consolidation where we have a parent subsidiary relationship, the parent owning 100, over 51% of the subsidiary, but not 100%. Therefore, we will have a non controlling issue interest that we will be dealing with, as well as the major focal point, which will be the S is going to issue more stock to the parent. In other words, the parent already has a controlling interest in S over 51%, but then S is going to issue more new stock, that stock then going to the parent. Get ready to account with advanced financial accounting. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, if you don't, that's okay because this will be a presentation. But if you do, we're going to be in this tab, the 936 tab. 936 tab. We're going to go through the information for the problem and then we'll take pieces of that information, taking a look at them as they apply to the calculations we will be working on as we go. So we have the parent uh, P, the parent purchases a percent of S, the subsidiary common stock. The amount of the purchase was 75%. So P parent originally has 75% interest in S. Purchased at book value. That means we don't have any differential. So it's purchased at the book value. Fair value non-controlling interest is in S is 25% at that point. So we have the breakout 75, 25. That's our starting point. Then on January 1st, 2000 X zero. So at the beginning of 2000 X zero, P purchased directly from S. In other words, S issued more shares of 2,500 to P. So now the subsidiary issued shares 2,500. Those shares then go into the parent. So we're going to have to take it into consideration what the effect is going to be of that. Uh, of that, the cost is going to be 150,000. In other words, the parent paid uh, 150,000 for the added 2,500 shares that were issued. So we're going to take a look at this in a few tables. We'll consider this in a table format, and then we will consider our uh, consolidation process. To the right, we have the beginning balances for S. So what we'll do is we'll consider the beginning balances before uh, any transactions took place with regards to this last component here. Then we'll think about the journal entries that would be on P's books and S's books with relation to this issuance of stock then we'll do our normal kind of consolidation process. So first, let's take a look at our at our equity section, which is our typical kind of uh, starting point. Equity section being down here. So the common stock, additional paid in capital, retained earnings for S before the issuance of the stock, before the issuance of the new, new shares is 100,000, 32,000, 190,000 for a total of 322,000. Then if we think about the new shares in terms of a table format, and you can imagine this, and we will see it shortly also in terms of a, um, a journal entry format, uh, we had the 150,000 that P paid to S for 2,500 shares. So that means that, uh, that the shares are going to go out for the common stock. The activity that's going to be happening is the 2,500 shares. We're going to say they have a $10 par value. So 2,500 times the $10 par value means that the new shares are going to increase the common stock for S by 25,000. The difference between the amount that is paid from P to S for the issuance of the stock, the 150 minus the 25,000, that'll be 125,000. That then go into the additional paid in capital. We'll see that shortly in a journal entry type format. Therefore, the ending balance right after this transaction takes place, this is before the transaction, this is after the transaction. So now let's consider another table here where we're going to take the beginning balance of the total number of shares. Our goal here is to think about what's what's going to be the effect on the percentages. Remember, we started with a 75-25% breakout. What's going to happen to that? Well, let's consider the total number of shares first that we had. We had 10,000 shares starting out because we had 100,000 common stock par value 10. 100,000 divided by 10 is that uh, 10,000. So then before this current activity happened, we had a 75-25 breakout. 75%, 10,000 times 0. 0.75 is 7,500 and 25, 2,500. That is going to P and the non-controlling interest or controlling and non-controlling interest. Then we have the shares that are going to be issued. So the shares that were issued were another 2,500. That's going to be increasing the total number of shares. 
those shares got issued all to P. So the parent got all of those, those new shares. So now the total number of shares have gone up from 10,000 by 2,500 to 12,500. P now has from 7,500 up by the 2,500, 10,000 shares. The non-controlling interest still has the uh, 2,500. Then uh, we're going to say, all right, well, then what's going to be the percentages? Our new percentages then will be, instead of the 75, 25, we now have P having 10,000 shares over the 12,500. So divided by 12,5, they have an 80% interest. And now, of course, the 2,500 divided by the 12,5 is going to be the 20%. So now our new interest here is going to be broken out in terms of an 80-20 breakout. Now this is going to be like the most confusing kind of component here. We're going to think, okay, well, what what's the journal entry that P is going to be recording in this in order to reflect their interest in, in the non-controlling interest? In other words, how are we going to break out or what are we going to think about the transaction with regards to P and their and this issuance of the stock? So we're going to take the the beginning book balance of the 322,000, 322,000, that's going to be the beginning book balance of S. So if I pull out the trusty calculator, that's the 100,000 plus the 32,000 plus the 190,000. That's the 322, which is the beginning equity section we have here, broken out in a 75,25. So if I was to break that out, that's the equity times the 0.75. Uh, that's going to be going to the parent, 241.5, and then the 25, 80,500 going to the non-controlling interest. That's basically our, that's going to be, you know, our starting point that we have. Then we have the issuance of the stock. We know what happened to the equity section because we calculated that up here uh, of the stock. That's going to be increasing the, the book value of S by the 150 because they got another 150 cash. This is the breakout that's going to be unusual. How are we going to allocate this to the to the non-controlling interest and the controlling interest? To think about that, we're going to we're going to do that yellow piece kind of last. We'll back into that number and we'll say, okay, let's think about the total first. This 322,000 plus the 150 brings us to the 472. This would be the 472 meaning this would be equity, this equity after the 150. We're increasing the equity by the 150 cash that went into S. Then we want to take that and say, well, I'd like to break this out, controlling, non-controlling interest between the new percentages, the 80-20, rather than the old percentages, 75-25. So I'm going to say this, our ending goal is to have this 472,000 broken out between 0.8, which would be the 377.6, and of course the 472,000 and the 0.2, which would be the 94.4. Once we know those two ending numbers, we can then say, okay, now I'm going to back into how we want to break out that 150,000 to get to our ending numbers, which now reflect the 80-20. So if I then say, okay, well, now we have our ending number of the 94.4 minus the beginning number of 80,005 means the change that we need is that 13,900 to get from the 80,005 to the 94,004. And on this side, we're going to take the 377600, the amount we want to get to, minus the 2415. That means we have a change of the 136,100 that we need in order to get to that 377600. Uh, now, note that this percentage doesn't make, does, you know, you're not going to be able to get there basically from the percent. I'm not going to take that 150,000 and multiply it times either 150,000, the point eight isn't going to get me there, right? Because we're, we're basically plugging in what we need to get to this end number. In other words, if I was to look at, to say what percent is the 136 one of the 150 to take the 136 100 divided by 150, we're going to get, uh, you know, 0.9, which doesn't reflect what we would expect, which would be be something like a 0.8 or, uh, or the 0.75 on the previous. So we're going to be backing into, the, that's what the yellow means, uh, these numbers. So then once we have that, I'm going to go back up top and we want to basically recalculate here, allocating between the controlling, non-controlling interest, this 472,000 that's going to be the equity section of S after the issuance of the, uh, the new shares and the 150 that S has received for them. So we then have the beginning balance at uh, the 322 same kind of breakout we had before that beginning balance representing 
the common stock additional paid in capital retained earnings that we're beginning and that's broken out 322,000 times the 0.75 the old percentages the 241.5 and the 80,500 then we have the new shares that were issued 150,000 it now being broken out in accordance with these yellow items down below for the non-controlling and controlling interest and that's going to give us then our ending balances here. So now we're going to have our ending balance, non-controlling interest, the 94400 That's what we expect this number or the non-controlling interest in the consolidation worksheet to be. And then uh, the ending book value is going to be here. And P's interest is going to be that 377600 So now let's go down and consider the transactions that would be taking place. And we're just going to look at the transactions for S and then P, and then we'll do the consolidation. So now let's look at S's books. This is S's books before we had this issuance of stock. So this is S's books before the issuance, then we had the issuance. Straightforward on S's books, the subsidiaries books. They're gonna receive 150,000, they're gonna be issuing the shares. So they received 150, they issued 2,500 $10 par share. Straightforward journal entry, they're gonna debit 150, they're gonna credit 25,000, that being the 2,500 times the $10 per share, the difference being the 125,000, therefore cash will be going up by the 150, the common stock going up and the additional paid in capital then uh, going up as well. Note that that is basically simply reflecting in journal entry format and trial balance format what we saw in our table here, bottom line of the tables being that 125, 157, 190, 125, 157, and 190. Okay, then, then let's take a look at P. This is the parents' books. Before we have the issuance of stock, this one's going to be a little bit more unusual. So we're going to say, well, P paid cash. I'm going to put that first because cash is cash is cash. So cash went down by the 150000 Then we have the investment. Now, the investment you would expect just to go up by the 150, but in order to, for us to reflect basically the equity method, in, in this case to reflect basically the, the equity in S, we're debiting it by what we found in this table here to be the 136,100 so that we get this ending balance number after we post this out to be the 377,600, which is going to match the 377,600 uh, here. And then the difference then, you're going to say, well, where does, where does the difference go? It's going to go into the additional paid in capital. So that's going to be probably the most unusual uh, kind of thing here to, in order to, but you can see what's, what the goal here is basically to reflect the investment account with regards to the equity uh, method based on the percentages, the percentages we currently have. So we got the cash then, cash then going down. We've got the investment. Here's the investment. Now, now reflecting that 377.6, which is what we want it to be, and then the difference going to that 13,900 going to the additional paid in capital. Okay, so now we can do our consolidation. So now we're taking P and S's information or trial balances. We're taking the ending trial balances after having recorded these, these transactions or the concurring transactions for the issuance of stock by S to P. And so now we've got uh, P's books, S's books after that has happened, the total here. And now we're just going to simply do our basic uh, elimination journal entry. And now everything should line up well now that we've we've entered those, those uh, entries correctly. So now we're going to say, all right, so the investment, let's do that last. I'll come back to that. Then the common stock, the 125000 We're just going to do our normal thing. It's on the books as a credit for S. We're going to take it off the books with debit. So then we're going to have the P's, S, this is the total. Then we removed S's portion, bringing us back to P. Then we're going to go to the additional paid in capital. We are removing that 157000 It's on the books as a credit. Therefore, we will debit it. Uh, so here's the parent's subsidiary uh, added together. We are removing the subsidiary back to the parent then. And then we have the retained earnings. So here's going to be the retained uh, the retained earnings at the 190. It's a credit here. We will do the opposite thing to it, debiting it. So then we have the parent subsidiary, the total. We are removing subsidiary back then to the parent. Then we have the non-controlling interest in NA. And that's going to be reflecting. And we can calculate this a couple different ways. We can say it's the assets minus the liabilities. And then, and then use our new percentages that we have or the equity section and use our percentages. So we could say either I'm going to take the 108 or the 208 
1,000 plus the 105 plus the 182 plus the 614 minus the 224 minus the 127 minus the 286. We could take that times the controlling interest, uh, which was 80% after, no, after this it was 60%. <laughs> Let me go back up and check that real quick. After, after we had the sale, 80%. So we'll take that times 0.8 and there's our 377.6 and then we can do the same thing i could take like the equity side here the equity side which would be the 125 thousand plus the 157 thousand plus the 190 thousand that's that 472 that 472 is also reflected here with those numbers here and then we can multiply that times the times the non-controlling interest let me do that one more time 25 thousand 157 thousand 190 thousand times the point two and there's the 94 four posting this out then we have the the investment posted out going back to zero as we would expect and then the non-controlling interest here being being recorded and we only have the balance sheet uh information so we don't have to worry about uh, the income statement transactions as we concentrate in on that change